Yeah, moving right along with visual arts, we've got a visual artist, a teacher, and um, an uh, exhibitor, uh, a person in totally in the arts. And uh, we're talking about Gail Peters. And Gail Peters is right here to my right. And uh, Gail, you're from the uh, Gilroy area. My name is Carol. Uh? Sorry. I, my name is Carol. Oh, I'm just, <laughs> Yeah. You know, it's been a long day. And um, oh, so sorry. Gail was the last one. This is Carol Peters. And um, Carol lives in Gilroy yes. and is a, a, a friend, a good friend of. Um, our good friend, Marilyn Abad Cardinelli. Mm -hmm. And Marilyn is the president of the Millennium Charter High School. Mm -hmm. She's the president of the board. And um, her husband um, uh, is in, tonight is in hospital. And oh. he's having an operation on his, uh, on his knee. And we hope everything is, yeah. is going a-okay with them, uh, with the Cardinellis tonight. So, Carol, let's back up. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your experiences up uh, uh, prior to, to um, getting full-fledged into the arts here. Okay. Um, well, what, what college, for example? I went to San Jose State. Yes. Um, and then to um, actually Santa Clara University. I um, always took classes, no matter if I was teaching and mm -hmm. my children, because it gave me time to actually work. Uh -huh. Because when you teach and then you have you know, a family, it's mm -hmm. pretty hard to go home and get your paints out on the dining room table. Yes, <laughs> yes. So I yeah. always took classes, and actually I took classes at uh -huh. Gavlin College, which um, is our local college. Okay. And um, and I I started teaching at 22, mm -hmm. and loved it. Uh, mm -hmm. Taught for 30 years and retired. I taught oh, both yeah. at Gilroy High School and at the University of Santa Clara. Okay. I and did, Carol, what did you teach? You taught. I taught painting and drawing. Painting and drawing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what surprise, a coincidence! Surprise, yes. Right. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then um, <clears throat> the University of Santa Clara, I actually did workshops for elementary teachers that were in the graduate program. Mm -hmm. And to my shock, um, when I would, you know, introduce myself and I, first time I said, well, uh, how many art classes have you had? And they just were like deer in the headlights and they said, uh, we haven't had any. Yes. Yep. So yep. I felt the big responsibility because, uh -huh. I mean, I was the one that was going to inspire them to go into their classrooms and actually, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, explore the wonderful world of art. And to me, there's nothing more rewarding than the arts. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I love to see um, McKate. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just a, a, like a blessing well, to anyone that can be here. I right. mean, it's amazing. Thank you. You know, uh, speaking of deer in the headlights, <laughs> the experience that a lot of our students have now in terms of the arts, now that we've gone through this whole period of drilling and killing and uh, taking money away from the mm -hmm. arts programs, we have a whole generation that deer in the headlights when you talk about art. Exactly. And um, exactly. so we have found at the Millennium Charter High School that we had to come up with a completely different curriculum mm -hmm. just to get kids up to grade level. Mm -hmm. uh, and the it. standards that uh, many, many other school districts have and have mm -hmm. had for years, and especially the more affluent ones, our, our children mm -hmm. W had none of that, right. okay? And so we're going to have to back up. We're going mm -hmm. to have to make sure that they they get it. Um, and over the last 10, 15 years, it's been especially mm -hmm. bad, oh, okay? I know. I know. So uh, in, in an effort to correct this and to make our folks competitive, mm -hmm. um, that the Millennium Charter High School is an attempt at, at um, getting everyone at the same starting uh, point. Mm -hmm. And Carol, I know you have, uh, you taught a workshop 
for our, our right, students. Right, I did, and, and it was a joy. Yeah, it was, it was hugely you. successful. And you could see youngsters making this huge jump. Mm -hmm. And that's because you're a master teacher and well, have done that. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, and, but I was really, really impressed with the, with the mm -hmm. work that you did. Now, uh, you have some samples of your own art. I do. Actually, I brought, um, I brought four different um, pieces, and they all represent different approaches. Mm. Um, and I think um, in my, you know, journey as um, an, an art teacher, I was exposed to so many different things that I could do in the classroom. And I taught a variety of media. And at the end, I was basically having um, advanced students. And I was really doing it like an independent study. Mm -hmm. because I would ask them, what, what are you interested in doing? Where do you want to go to college? Let's look up the criteria mm -hmm. for a portfolio and work to that. Mm -hmm. So I had different kinds of media out at the same mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And so by actually having to explore that media myself, I have just kind of ventured out into all kinds. Mm -hmm. I'm not a, a, you know, one, I'm not just an acrylic painter. I'm not one thing. Mm -hmm. I love just exploring. Mm -hmm. And I think that's given me this passion for just discovery. Mm -hmm. um, the first piece that um, I brought is for commission and it's actually a landscape in Gilroy but when I was in the uh, green room waiting for um, you know to come on everyone was thinking it was from around here so I guess it can be wherever you want it to be uh -huh. but um, a friend of mine lives at Country Estates and they had a, a view from their home and they asked me to paint the view so when you're trying to uh, capture what's in someone else's mind of what they want, mm -hmm. that's another approach uh, mm -hmm. as far as where you start. Mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. to, I went to the home, I actually talked to them, I measured the wall um, and uh, you know where it would be hung and um, asked them a lot of questions, took pictures, asked them if they had taken some favorite pictures, went home and started to sketch. All trying to get their vision of what they wanted. Uh -huh. So you're working to somebody else's wishes mm -hmm. and hope, hoping that you can understand that enough so that your own, um, you don't want to compromise your own, you know, style uh -huh. at all, but you want to actually embrace it and try to get something that they love. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> in the process, I changed it a few times. Uh, added a few more cows here and there. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, and they wanted the fog rolling in. They wanted it green. You know, uh, they, okay. they loved uh, the tree. They mm -hmm. didn't really want a lot of buildings. So with that in mind, I just went ahead and they were very happy with it. So I brought it tonight. It's not framed. They're going to frame it, but I couldn't fit it in my car frame. So I asked them not to. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, okay. Uh, uh, was that a commissioned yes, art piece? Yes, it was a commissioned art piece. Oh my goodness. So mm -hmm. that was very similar to, we were talking earlier about the uh, Renaissance, specifically the, mm -hmm. the Florentine um, academies or mm -hmm. schools. Mm -hmm. And they, they worked on commission uh -huh. for everybody from the Pope to some exactly. duke or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a, it's an interesting thing. I have a couple more um, uh, pieces that are on commission now, and it's it's really fun. It's a very it's a challenge. Oh, I would. I, I stared that. at that black blank canvas, thinking, okay, get an inspiration. You have to see this in your head before uh -huh. you actually commit uh -huh. to putting a wash down. Right, and and that landscape mm -hmm. that we were looking at that was um, that was in our area here. In right? Gilroy, so it it's was in Gilroy, Gilroy. Okay. and actually uh, people recognize it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of like a, uh, I guess, an area that, that is indic indicative mm -hmm. of around right, here as well. Right. So do they have fog in Gilroy. We do. Oh my because goodness! Because we're in a valley, and it comes right over the mountains, oh. and it comes like in fingers. And that's exactly how they described how they wanted it. They wanted the fingers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I live on the peninsula, and I think the last <laughs> month we had like one day of sun, mm -hmm. and and fog is uh, a part of our being. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what do we have, what what's here? Now this I'm very, very excited about. Uh -huh. This is, um, I just finished this last week. I have never done anything like this. I've never seen anything like this. And so when I think of exploring another area and another venue, this is totally um, 
my invention, to uh -huh. my knowledge. I'm sure there's nothing new under the sun, and there's probably others out there, but I had never seen it. Uh -huh. um, there's going to be an art exhibit called Journeys in Gilroy on Saturday, and so uh -huh. I'm part of that exhibit, and we are, we're all to work to express a journey of somehow, mm. you know, some kind. Okay. One of the uh, artists is a poet writer, and her journey, she <coughs> was inspired by the Camino in Spain, where she walked the 500 miles oh. and came back and wrote poetry sure. and, you know, did uh, uh, some writing. And so they asked me to join uh, as an artist in the exhibit. So I was thinking, I don't really. I didn't walk 500 miles in Spain, right. and, but my journey, I was thinking to myself, was a personal one, and I wanted to incorporate the energy of my family somehow uh -huh. in a painting. So incorporating the energy, mixing that and the media, and to me, I thought, let's weave it together. Mm -hmm. So the first couple projects, I mean, or weavings I did, I had um, my two-year-old two granddaughter and my four-year-old grandson actually paint two canvases and I wove them together and they were wonderful. I, um, I was totally excited. Then I asked my son and his wife to do one, wove that together. Now this is mine and what I did is I took two separate canvases and I painted them. I spray painted, I used uh, spray paint and then I went back with acrylic and I, and I did like a, just a f rhythm and form and movement uh -huh. and color and then I cut them in a wave both directions so I had to piece them together so that each piece matched. Is, is this like a mosaic? It's a like, weaving. It's a weaving. It's a weaving. I'm, you know, it's, so this is actual fabric. It's actual <clears throat> canvas. Ah. I, I cut the canvas in, in, in wavy lines and I cut the other canvas in wavy lines and I put them together and I I love the result. It's got a lot of rhythm and movement yeah, and color. See, yeah, you can see um, that. And you get close to it, and you can see the um, the sparkle of the okay. of you know the <clears throat> all the metallics coming through with the, from the spray paint. So I'm t I'm very excited. I actually um, displaying just weavings for this show. I did eight of them in a short period of time. I was this is up, called a weaving. I call it. Um, it's a woven canvas. I don't know what you call it. It's I've never seen it, but it's woven. Uh huh. And um, it's a painting woven canvas. Um, How fascinating! And this is your it's personal my journey. Brain, yes, it's my to me. It's my invention. I've never seen okay. this before. Okay. And I didn't know if it would work. So when I sat down and I had this giant canvas that I had painted, and it really was kind of beautiful. Uh huh. And I took my mat knife and actually started cutting it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It was very hard. Yeah. <laughs> and uh -huh. uh, so I cut, um, I cut it in a wave and then I cut the other one in a wave and then I put both of them together and then get all this wonderful movement and I just, I'm excited about it. I am very excited. Um, and the other ones I experimented with um, painting on top of the weave and some of them I actually went back with an airbrush and airbrushed on top of that. So it's wonderful having the ability to pick up whatever media that you want and change it if you don't feel like it's working. But I just love this one. It's just pure woven canvas. Well, I'm very impressed, and I think that mm -hmm. uh, the judges will be too. Well, um, thank you. And um, okay, so we're moving right along. I think we've got another. Oh, this is uh, something very different. Yes, yeah. this is um, actually Robert Guerrero. He's a fighter. He just fought Mayweather uh, at the MGM in Las Vegas, and uh, actually he didn't win, but he uh, he held his own and did a real good, you know, showed a lot of a lot of inner strength. Okay. Uh, so he... I had Robert at, over uh, in my studio. I was doing a Carol on Creativity, which was a show for uh, Gab TV. Mm -hmm in which I teach painting and drawing and whatever uh, creative kind of thing I want to do. And we, uh, I had a problem with my arm. My arm was um, actually um, not functional. I had, a, I had to have an operation. Oh. Um, I had an ulnar nerve that was being pinched, so my oh. hand was actually going. So when I shot the show with Robert, 
I could hardly hold an airbrush, and we did airbrush it. Mm. I had to cut a stencil for the airbrush, and I cut this very intricate stencil, and it was all covered up. And what you see here was the trial. I was just going to have him shoot the background with me, and then I was going to just discard it, and I had a canvas that I was actually going to do another one on. Because uh -huh. for the show, a lot of times, you just do one that's kind of like fast and right. furious. Right. So we shot the background, this covering of acetate that was so intricate, every little detail, his eyebrows were cut out, the eyes were cut out, everything, so I could lift them and shoot it with an airbrush and put them back and lift and shoot. It's a, a long, long process. I did the background, and then I went and I had three surgeries, all the way down my arm, my hand, my thumb, everything. I was in this giant cast. Then I had to have the, you know, the, all the rehab, not rehab, but what do you call it, the, where you, you know, physical therapy. And oh, everything. yes. Okay. So then I could actually, you know, I got back where I could hold a pencil yeah. and write. I couldn't yeah. write when I went in. Oh, I was my like, goodness. and okay. for an artist, that was like, Oh my God, you know. Oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, when I, I came I back a year later, I looked at this and I had this acetate on it and I thought, I don't want to do this. It's going to take too long and I, I just want to get in and paint. I've been so like frustrated not having, you know, the ability to do that. Mm -hmm. So I took the, the acetate, I ripped it off, I grabbed the airbrush and I just started shooting it. And then I thought, you know what, I know that when you hit pastel it melts. So I got pastel, and I was like a wild person out there. I was like throwing down the pastel, picking Goodness. up the airbrush, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> melting it in. Yeah. And so the, this is the result. It's, it's kind of an approach that changed direction. Okay. The, um, <clears throat> and as a prize fighter, did you know you knew him I personally? I know him, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. He, he and his family went to Gilroy High School. Oh. And I had his family in class, and they were wonderful. Uh -huh. um, you know, just uh, great people. He used to come to my class, and so when he became a fighter, um, you know, I still see him. I mean, I, you know, uh, well, talk hopefully to him he's, and, yeah. yeah, he's looking for another fight. He hopes in September. Oh. Mm -hmm. But they're a, okay. they're a wonderful family. Lots, oh, okay. lots of uh, class. Okay. Always gentlemen. You okay. know, I had, I think, three of his brothers, and they were all great, oh, great okay. guys. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I recognize this lady. Um, <laughs> oh. This is um, Marilyn Monroe. Now, this approach was done for instruction. Okay. And I did it, actually, with the Millennium Charter High School workshop that we were talking yes. about before. Uh -huh. And it was an instruction on how to start a drawing. So the approach to this one isn't wild and crazy and let's try this and let's try that. At a beginning level, what you want to do is give, it, give very, very precise, um, deliberate instructions so everything is taken step by step. And you break the steps down so that's super easy. Mm -hmm. So we started out with a grid on top of a photograph and then Actually, the lesson is a beautiful one because it teaches you just to look at the little square uh -huh. and take whatever you see in the photograph and move it over to your paper, one square at a time. So you're just looking at that one square. So on this, you can, if you look closely, there's squares still in the background. So I did this as an example. I, yeah, I pulled them out as much as I could for the, um, you know, with an eraser, but not a lot. So when you're when you're approaching um, an art piece for instruction, it's a lot different. Uh -huh. You don't have the liberty of just, you know, taking it anywhere you want to go. Um, you are trying to get the student to understand what you're saying. You want to break it down so it's very, very easy. You want it to be clear, and you know what your end result is going to be before you start. There's no <clears throat> wavering here. Uh -huh, so it's very uh -huh. deliberate, very methodical, and it's a completely different approach than the rest of the examples I've just shown you. Right. So and I think a lot of, the, of any art is having in your mind what you really want to do first. You know, when you know you're doing it for a lesson, you, you have to do it a certain way. When you're doing it for commission, you do it another way. Mm -hmm. When you're just doing it for yourself, like I did the woven canvas, 
I approached that in just whatever I wanted to do. So I had that freedom and that luxury. Mm -hmm. So I think art is, um, you know, it, people think that it's not a lot of an intellectual process, but it really is. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot more to it than just grabbing right. some paint and putting it down on paper or, pen, or canvas. <coughs> right, and uh, the, the previous artist um, <coughs> mentioned that, that she likes that, I think, actually as with what one would call abstract art mm -hmm. and would work directly with the medium itself mm -hmm. and um, and then it, it, the uh, the concept or whatever would come out of that interaction mm -hmm. so with the Marilyn Monroe one um, that seems very studied very oh, thoughtful yeah. in every yeah. stage uh, along mm -hmm. the way mm -hmm. okay you know um, somebody uh, somebody once told me that uh, with visual artists, they're not necessarily verbal artists. Mm -hmm. And uh, in terms of describing mm -hmm. what you do, you are fantastic. Well, thank you. And that's, I think that's because you're also a teacher. I think so too. I um, think that but, has a lot to do with it. Um, and mm -hmm. in just capturing the experience of the moment and, and the different mediums that you mm -hmm. work with, I think those are fascinating descriptions now going going forward in art mm -hmm. in visual art and commissioned art mm -hmm. where where do you see that going for myself in yourself and in general I really love the fact that somebody's touched the surface uh -huh. um, and I'm not taking anything away from graphic design in any way, because my son is a, a creative director, mm -hmm. and he makes a great living at uh, you know doing graphics, and it's all computer generated. But I think um, it's very it, there's something beautiful about having another person actually touch and have work to surface. Mm -hmm. So I think um, for me. I know he gave me a lot of equipment to start doing a graphic because when right. my arm went, he thought, okay, mom, now you can't do this anymore. Right, so, right, you know, right. you can do it right. on the computer. And it, I was right. so frustrated. I just wanted to, right. you know. And Carol, you hit, you hit it on the head. That's <laughs> the direction of graphic arts, okay, mm -hmm. and computer generated art. Mm -hmm. So there, there are three students in this room here, mm -hmm. okay? There's Tyler, there's Manny and there's Tony. How, how would you, how would you explain to them, okay, mm -hmm. in the study of art, okay, mm -hmm. and and they're they're clever guys. I can I'm assure sure you, they they're, are. They're, they 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 could do it. How how would you go about with these? And they're totally the computer generation. Mm -hmm. Well, I think this this story will will tell you everything. Um, my son was, you know, in San Diego. He had graduated, had his degree in, uh, in graphic design, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was doing uh, well down there, but he, there was a great job in San Francisco. That's where he is right. now. So he uh, came up and he had his portfolio and it was all graphics, mm -hmm. everything he'd done. And he used to do um, the covers for Sony PlayStation games. Yeah. So, I mean, he was yeah. very, you know, talented and uh -huh. had a really great portfolio. So he gets to the interview. Now, mind you, he's flown up. He has a portfolio. He's going to spend the, you know, overnight and then go back. And they say, well, um, do you have any drawings? And he said, well, yeah, but not here. And they said, well, we, we're not going to hire anybody that we don't know can really draw. Yeah. Because bottom line, you need to be able to draw a mixed color um, composition, uh, all the elements of design, you have to have that as a basis before you get onto that computer because that's what makes that work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he came home, went through his bedroom, got his high school artwork. <laughs> I said, you're not going to go there with that, are you? <laughs> and he goes, Mom, I'm not going to go all the way back to San Diego and come back. Mm -hmm. So he went there, he showed it to him, and he was hired. But what I'm saying is I think you have to have both. You have to have the knowledge. You have to have the experience of actually, to me, seeing that color mixed together, see what happens, um, and feeling it. Now, when people commission, 
something, it's they want it to be a tactile, um, you know, original piece. Sure. Yeah, Although absolutely. there's some beautiful things done on metals, and, and they're now taking yeah. them and, and they're uh, doing G clays, which are you know shot, looking like paint. Uh -huh. um, but I, I really think that the originality and there's something about having that little bit of error maybe in there where you can't Photoshop it and can't correct it, you know, and having a person actually touch it. I just got back from Italy, and I mean, you could just stand in front of David or stand in front of the, the masterpieces and just, you know, there's something that communicates to you non-verbally that speaks to your soul, and I don't think something flat and shiny can do that. I. But I'm old school. I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm old school. <laughs> so well, I'm not uh, always right about everything, but in my Carol, heart, you're, that's... Your school, <laughs> let's, let's put it that way. And I, I think, I had a similar experience in Florence, mm -hmm. uh, and I was in, I, I forget exactly where the David is. It's not, but... It's near the Uffizi. It's in uh, yeah, the, it's not in the Uffizi, no, it's but, not, but it's, it's, it's near. close by. And, and there were thousands of people mm -hmm. in there crowding around and I felt this really odd mm -hmm. feeling mm -hmm. there's something in this room exactly. okay and you got exactly. it there's some compelling there's something in this room mm -hmm. and it almost forces you to turn around and mm -hmm. look at this incredible sculpture that changed the direction of art mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and out of the uh, dark ages, out of the middle ages, and into the renaissance, and you can see it mm -hmm. in, that, in that marvelous sculpture. Mm -hmm. Well, um, this has been most elucidating, and I, I think at some time or another you've been an actress, because I think I... that you're very entertaining up well, here as well. thank you, thank you. And um, one of the things that uh, folks also warned about that uh, visual artists are not necessarily verbal and mm -hmm. it, it could be quite an evening. Mm -hmm. But the only stumble that's happened here is in, in the names. <laughs> that's perfectly fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is the, again, uh, you're watching uh, McKate, uh, Comcast 36, and we're in the fourth day, believe it or not, wow. of our premiere week. And every day something happens with these incredibly creative, innovative guys that run this. Uh, you know, we didn't quite know how to do your easel thing, uh -huh. but look at how they've oh, figured amazing, it out. Amazing, amazing. Fellas, that's innovation, that's creativity. You're working with people <laughs> that can make these adjustments. And that's something, and Jack's telling me to wind it up. And uh, thank you so much, Carol. Thank and you. I hope to see uh, see you come back and, oh, and help our students. I'd love and, to. And I'd love to. Uh, certainly a dynamic representative of the visual arts. Well, thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed every minute of okay. it. Okay. Uh, all right. So we'll take a brief uh, break here, and then we will come back uh, uh, with our continuing sequence of uh, of artists and gallery owners and people that actually make a living in in the arts.